of course, art appreciation is related, of, obviously, to art. And uh, that means there's no one single answer to that question because art plays so many different roles in our lives and our society. So uh, appreciation uh, is, is, is related to uh, the different kinds of uh, in interests you may take in the kind of art it is. Some art may be religious, some art may be political, some art might just be very beautiful. Um, so uh, art appreciation uh, is probably best grasped in terms of understanding. You, instead of saying appreciating art, you could say understanding. And, and so art appreciation is a matter of understanding art better. Uh, now, since different kinds of art uh, address different kinds of needs and purposes, um, the understanding will be relative to that. So uh, art appreciation, in terms of the way, say, it, it w might help you understand the, the theme of a religious work, uh, would, would contribute to um, your life as a spiritual being. Uh, likewise, politics. Um, and again, it's probably best to think of appreciation as a form of understanding. Um, so, uh, in the various ways that uh, you're interested in understanding the art, either in terms of its message or in terms of its structure, uh, art appreciation will uh, enrich your life. Well, in, in, in most cultures nowadays, of course, you, you start in school. When you learn to read, you just don't learn how to pronounce the words. Uh, you are presented with stories, stories that, for example, transmit the values uh, and uh, feelings of a culture to you. When you learn to read, you learn to feel, you learn how to understand various ideas, how to admire certain ideals. Uh, and, and so acculturation in general, as, as you are, are taught the various art forms, uh, as, as you're taught to read, for example, uh, as you're taught not only how to look at pictures, but how to make pictures and get your ideas across from pictures, uh, when you're taught uh, a musical instrument, when you're taught to sing. These are all ways in which you learn almost by osmosis uh, the uh, rudiments of, of, of art appreciation, of, of how to deal with art objects, what to expect from them, uh, how to engage with them. And in doing that, you not only engage with art, but you also engage with uh, the culture at large, because art is a major part of the conversation of culture. Uh, it's the way cultural feelings, ideals, ideas, themes, commitments, it's the way in which all of those things are, are, are transmitted. Uh, so when you're taught um, literacy in any of the different art forms, you're also being uh, recruited uh, in, in, into the life of the community that you're a member of. Well, uh, I'm departing from Danto in one sense. He presented a, a definition of art. He said art was embodied meaning, by which he meant art had a content, a theme, uh, that it embodied in an appropriate formal sense. Uh, it, uh, it gave a body to that meaning. It embodied it. I differ from him because I, I don't try to define art. I just make the commonplace observation that artworks are artifacts, and as artifacts, they have purposes. And uh, they just don't have uh, purposes. They have what I call constitutive purposes. Uh, a constitutive purpose is the uh, purpose that makes a thing the kind of thing it is. So uh, the constitutive purpose of a steak knife is to cut tough meat. You might have other, other purposes, you might want to pick your teeth with it, uh, but that, that function is not a, a constitutive one. It's not one that makes a steak knife a steak knife. 
Artworks have constitutive purposes. For example, a, rit a religious artwork, a, 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 a picture of the Madonna and child, or a, a picture of uh, Christ's crucifixion, has a constitutive purpose uh, to engender your your feeling for Jesus Christ, for uh, your admiration for the sacrifice that he's made. Um, and so that's the constitutive purpose, and it's the role of the artist to find a way to uh, ar articulate that. So um, I'm differing from Danto in that uh, I'm not trying to define art. I'm just trying to find uh, a patent or a heuristic or an approach to how you would go, out, go about trying to appreciate or understand art. And to do that, you don't need a definition the way he expects. You uh, merely need a, a kind of procedure or a, a, a way uh, of, of approaching art. And for that, you can think of the artwork as a relationship between a, 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 a purpose and a, a mode in which the purpose is implemented. So I guess you could think of what I'm doing as uh, partly following Danto, but amending it slightly. Uh, amending it in terms of replacing the notion of a meaning with a constitutive purpose and giving up the idea of trying to define art. Well, I, I think that aesthetic experience is a kind of successor to the idea of taste. Taste was an 18th century idea and it was associated with, with pleasure. So uh, the model for it was gustatory taste. So uh, the idea of taste was just as you uh, find the ice cream uh, sweet and delightful, uh, so you will find the artwork pleasurable. Now, the idea of, of thinking that the engagement of art is uh, simply for the purpose of pleasure was too narrow. Uh, people uh, uh, soon realized, well, there's a lot of art that doesn't give you uh, pleasure. Um, so, uh, for example, um, images by Aronimus Bosch of, of hell, they weren't supposed to give you pleasure. They were supposed to scare you, and they were supposed to give you images that would disgust you to serve the purpose of you're leading a good life. You're making sure that you don't wind up in a place like hell. So uh, because uh, it's obvious that art has purposes other than pleasure, uh, people uh, try to stick with the idea that uh, the artwork was still connected to experience. But in general, they suggested um, the artworks are things that uh, we, we value because we value the experiences. The experiences might not necessarily be experiences of pleasure, though. They might be broader. They might be experiences of horror, for example. But uh, the person who defends the idea of, of aesthetic experience would say, yes, uh, but, but that's an aesthetic experience because we value the experience of horror for its own sake. And the notion of its own sake is uh, connected to uh, the association of art with pleasure. Why? Well, suppose you're eating a candy bar, and I, I say to you, uh, why are you eating a candy bar? It, it, it's really of no nutritious value whatsoever. You might say, well, no, I, I just like it. it. It's valuable for its own sake. So that idea of being intrinsically valuable um, is inherited by the idea of aesthetic experience, but exper aesthetic experience isn't narrowly focused on pleasure. So that, that's what the relationship of the two ideas are historically. Um, now, I don't ex accept the general idea of aesthetic experience as having to be valued for its own sake. Um, I think you have an aesthetic experience if you have an experience of the aesthetic properties of the artwork. For example, it's, it's unity. But you don't necessarily have to value that for its own sake. Uh, you might value the organization of the work of art because it, it sharpens the religious theme of the work of art.
Do we think that an, an aesthetic experience is an experience uh, that evolves over time, so that uh, uh, it, 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 it has a trajectory, it, it's complete, but it has a, a, a kind of temporal completeness, a beginning, a middle, and end. And I don't think that's adequate because I think sometimes uh, an, an artwork can hit you all at once. And this notion that it, it's something that evolves over time doesn't capture that. So you might look at that uh, uh, famous sculpture of Picasso's where he makes a bull's head out of uh, the seat of a bicycle and the, the bars of the bicycle. Well, you just look at that and pow, you get it. It's not anything that it evolves uh, uh, from a beginning to an end and has a kind of temporal completeness. It just hits you all at once. So I think that the Dewey idea of aesthetic experience is too limited uh, by its commitment to this idea of a kind of evolutionary, developmental, almost narrative uh, uh, trajectory. Well, I think that that certainly is true, and I think also that it's the case, as you just pointed out, that very often um, when we know more, uh, when we revisit an artwork, um, different aspects of it become aware. But I don't really think that fits the, the Dewey model because, uh, well, let's just imagine that you, you looked at the artwork 10 years ago and now you're looking at it again after you've uh, seen a, a lot more art. You wouldn't want to say the aesthetic experience is spread over those 10 or 20 years. I just don't think it fits what he was kind of, uh, what he was kind of get, getting at. Uh, and and I, I think that what he uh, presented as a model, though it works very well for many things, isn't, isn't comprehensive because it really doesn't uh, capture the kind of um, um, oh, immediate experience you can have uh, that, that comes in a, in, in a flash. Also, I, I, I wonder whether or not uh, every work of art um, is, is enriched by experience. Um, you know, there are some, some jokes, for example, uh, that you get the, the uh, punchline the first time you hear it, and the second time you hear it, you, hear it, you don't actually get a deeper understanding of, of the joke. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I think there may be some artworks like that, um, that uh, it's not as if the, uh, the, the, the later experience brings uh, new insight. Uh, it may only have one insight to offer. It is really the, the century uh, in, in which uh, theorizing about taste becomes uh, very prominent. Uh, the reason for that may also be because in the 18th century, the art world changes in certain ways. Uh, in the Middle Ages, in the ancient world, for example, uh, a lot of the patronage of the art comes from uh, religion, from the aristocracy, uh, from, from the state, so that um, the, uh, the, the bishop or the pope or the cardinal uh, will commission various works uh, for uh, the purpose of aiding uh, adoration and um, uh, disseminating theological tenets in, 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 the, in the church. And uh, aristocrats will have uh, artworks made of them and their family uh, in order to uh, uh, more or less uh, ad advertise their yes. standing and their nobility. And the, the state will uh, erect uh, statues to generals and uh, uh, portraits of battles to celebrate state power or uh, pictures of coronations and state marriages. So the patronage uh, uh, belonged to the, to the state, to the priesthood and to the aristocracy. But what begins to emerge um, uh, at a certain point in history is a, a new class, the bourgeoisie, uh, the urban bourgeoisie, 
who have a lot of uh, time and uh, money at their disposal, and they become the new patrons of arts, and they're using art as a way of in enriching their, their leisure time. Um, they're not necessarily uh, concerned with these big issues of disseminating uh, religious doctrine or celebrating the power of the state. Uh, they're interested in using them as objects of leisure. So the, the, uh, the interest becomes uh, to talk about what is, what is the function of, of, of art in this um, a, a emerging society where um, the roles in the art world are changing. And uh, at that point, uh, one, one proposal, uh, maybe a fairly obvious proposal, is to say, well, uh, the purpose of these artworks is, is for pleasure. And uh, the way they should be uh, used uh, is, is to uh, fill our increasing leisure time with, with beautiful things that give us pleasure. Uh, and then uh, the notion of taste is connected to that because taste becomes the model of, of pleasure. So just as you savor a fine meal, you should savor or relish uh, a beautiful artwork. Well, insofar as taste is connected to the idea of pleasure, uh, I think it should be fairly obvious that uh, um, if you look at the art of, uh, world, of the world, both historically and cross-culturally, that, that pleasure is not actually uh, what the aim of most of, of, of most art has been. I mean, probably most art emerged in the in the service of uh, religious and communal purposes, uh, rain dances, war dances, various kinds of ceremonies and and, and rituals. And uh, uh, art continued in that vein. I mean, if you go to India, what you see are uh, 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 endless temples. Uh, not just palaces, but temples and palaces. The palaces are, 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 are celebrating the authority of the Raj. Uh, the temples are, are, are for reverential purposes. Uh, they're, they're, they're not primarily for pleasure. Uh, if, if pleasure has a role in it, pleasure, beauty, those things are actually meant to serve deeper purposes. Uh, the, uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary in, in Western culture uh, is, is beautiful to uh, encourage our adoration. Uh, many of medieval artists and religious artists would think it would, would be blasphemous uh, to uh, uh, think that, you know, uh, that this purpose of, the purpose of the Madonna and Child was just for you to enjoy looking at it. Now, they might say, well, I w we did want you to desire to look at it, but that actually uh, was serving a much deeper end. And of course, many works of art have, have, have nothing to do with pleasure. For example, there's a, 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 a dance in New Zealand, a Maori dance called the haka, uh, and it involves damping your feet, uh, grunting, bulging out your eyes, it's meant to to scare off people, to intimidate them. Uh, uh, it's uh, it, it, it's it's uh, sometimes you probably have have seen it. Sometimes it's used at the beginning of soccer games or football games, where one team does a hawker to to intimidate the other side, to scare them. Now that dance wasn't designed for the purpose of of giving your enemies or your rivals pleasure. It was meant to scare the bejesus out of them. Okay, so going back to your question, trying to answer your question, one problem with the pleasure model is that it's too narrow. I would never want to deny that there isn't some artwork that's made primarily for the purpose of, of giving you pleasure, uh, some art that is meant to delight you, some art that is made to, so that you can't take your eyes off of it because you just enjoy looking at it. That, that's certainly true. So it's not as if the notion of uh, pleasure isn't associated with some art. Um, the point is it's not associated with all art. Uh, and even with the art 
where, say, uh, strategies like beauty are used, uh, very often that beauty is of secondary importance. It's not there uh, uh, for the primary purpose of giving you delight. It's, 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 giving, uh, it, it's there in order to uh, uh, support a higher purpose. Well, if you go uh, uh, or look and expect of every artwork that it's supposed to give you pleasure uh, or that it's supposed to be beautiful, um, you'll reject many important works of art. For example, think of uh, German Expressionist art, uh, work by artists like George Gross, who meant to be using uh, uh, art to criticize Weimar society, and, and did it by uh, making plutocrats and businessmen uh, fat and ugly and disgusting. Um, well, you might, if you, you, you had this bias that the work of art should be beautiful or that it should be such to give you pleasure, um, then you would uh, lose a, an appreciation for what it is. Basically, what I call the art appreciative heuristic is uh, returning to what I said earlier, uh, 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 an approach that assumes that an artwork has a purpose and then uh, the work of the artist is to find an appropriate way to articulate that, that purpose. One way in which it's superior to uh, the taste model is uh, whereas the taste model uh, more or less suggests that all, all artwork has the same purpose, namely the delivery of pleasure, uh, the uh, art appreciative heuristic uh, really is sensitive to the singularity of artworks. Insofar as artworks have different purposes, they'll uh, have, have different forms, they'll be made, they'll be constructed in different ways. Uh, they'll be, uh, if, new, if not utterly unique, uh, they'll have their own special character. Uh, this is something that we, uh, uh, in, in general, ap applaud in artworks, and uh, the appreciative uh, heuristic uh, zeroes in on that. So, just to give you an example, if you think of Gothic cathedrals, uh, if you think of their, their construction, uh, they have these spires. And what do these spires do? They make your eye look upwards. They have these vaulting high ceilings. What do they do? They make, your, they make you look up. All of these things are uh, 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 devices or strategies that articulate uh, one of the constitutive purposes of the the church, which is to uh, draw your attention to heaven, uh, to make you aware of, of something transcendent, something that's coming uh, down from above. So the uh, appreciative heuristic draws your attention to the way in which the work is, is suiting its purpose. Uh, it also uh, would uh, alert you to cases where um, the, the work is defective because it's not adjusted to its purpose. Think of uh, making a triumphant arch, like the Arch uh, de Triomphe in, in, in Paris, which is supposed to celebrate uh, uh, a victory. Well, if you, you made that out of paper mache uh, and it dissolved the first time it rained, you would realize that that was not the <laughs> appropriate way to articulate the content of the work or the purpose of the work, which was to celebrate victory and strength. Well, I, I think that one, uh, th this notion of taste can be used, uh, like, like many uh, I ideas, in various ways. And uh, I think that there is a difference that we might draw between critical or appreciative taste on the one hand and personal taste on the other. Personal taste uh, it, it is connected to pleasure in the sense that personal taste is the kind of thing 
uh, that, that one likes. And I think that some people, when they hear me suggest things like we should forget taste, they might think, oh, he's, he's saying that I, I shouldn't be allowed to have my own taste, I shouldn't have personal taste. Well, he can drop dead. Uh, and, and to a certain extent, they're right. I, I mean, I myself have, have certain kinds of artworks that, that, that I prefer o over others. So I don't want to deny that there are things that we like. Uh, I just want to deny that uh, the matter of appreciating them is a matter of, 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 of just liking things. In fact, we can appreciate things we don't like, and we can like things that we don't, don't really uh, regard very highly. Uh, a lot of very sophisticated literary critics uh, uh, like every once in a while to, to, to read a, a pedestrian thriller or, or mystery story, uh, although they don't, they don't uh, necessarily uh, re regard that as uh, uh, great works. Uh, they have what we call guilty pleasures. Uh, so it's possible to uh, like something but not uh, uh, find it uh, very uh, uh, worthy of appreciation. It's also possible to think of something very highly uh, that you don't like. Many uh, 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 very uh, sophisticated uh, music uh, uh, lovers and, and, and critics um, uh, think that Wagner's uh, achievements were, were estimable, but they don't particularly have a taste for Wagner. Uh, other uh, op opera lovers may prefer Wagner over Italian operas, but they still uh, acknowledge uh, Verdi's uh, accomplishments. So my basic point is that Appreciating something uh, doesn't either psychologically or logically uh, commit you to liking it. Uh, now, your question was, well, why do people uh, resist my ideas? And the answer to that is, well, uh, they may think when I say that, that taste is really irrelevant to appreciation, that I'm, I'm saying something like, you're not allowed to have your own personal tastes or uh, um, your, your personal tastes uh, uh, are, um, you, know, you know, something you should get over. Uh, and, and I'm not saying that. On the other hand, some people might say, well, you know, you can't take the, the, uh, uh, the liking of something uh, uh, and subtract it from the idea of appreciation. Uh, they might say, because you'll appreciate it better uh, if, if, if you prefer it. Um, but actually, in my own experience, sometimes people who, who likes something, uh, I think, for example, of, of uh, horror fans, horror film fans, um, they uh, 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 have their appreciation warped by that. Uh, their, their liking can make them uh, think that uh, a work is much better than it actually is. Uh, so uh, I don't want to deny that there are tastes, but I also don't uh, buy the idea that um, if, if you like something, you'll be a better appreciator of that. Uh, your liking may uh, actually uh, warp your ability to appreciate it uh, in the way that uh, 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 being the mother of a serial killer make, might make you uh, see more redeemable aspects to his personality than anyone else sees. <laughs>
purpose of those works, the constitutive purpose is to uh, array, uh, raise fear and disgust. So um, you, you can't appreciate the work without uh, thinking about uh, if it's got the uh, constitutive purpose of, of arousing emotions, whether or not they succeed in doing that. For example, suspense or mel melodrama. Uh, so I'm not suggesting that you should put your emotions on ice. Although you can have in inappropriate um, emotions. It may be, for example, uh, that you're uh, uh, looking at an, an, an artwork that, uh, let's say, a, a, a film. Uh, you're looking at a film, uh, and it's a it's a it's a film from from Germany during World War II, and and uh, you're French, and so you have a an an emotion of aversion to that. Well, that, that emotion is really inappropriate uh, and, and does uh, serve as an obstacle uh, to your ap appreciation because, among other things, it will muddy your thinking about whether or not the film is uh, discharging the constitutive purposes it was designed to do. So it's, it, it, the, the idea of, of emphasizing the, the cognitive aspect of the appreciative response uh, the, the matter of understanding the work um, doesn't uh, uh, mandate that you put your uh, um, emotions in deep freeze. Uh, actually, uh, having uh, the emotional response is a subroutine or something that contributes to uh, uh, discovering the uh, constitutive purpose and actually evaluating whether the uh, uh, the uh, constitutive purpose is being discharged. But there are inappropriate emotions as well. So if you go to a, a dance recital and, and your, your niece uh, is in, in the performance of the, the dance school and, and she's your favorite niece, uh, it, it would be in, inappropriate for you to uh, uh, make your, your, your love and affection for your niece play any role in evaluating uh, her performance as a ballerina.